Hey guys. Hey. Welcome back to episode two of I Bet You Think This Podcast Is About You. Um, And if you think it's about you, it isn't, but you think it is because (laughs) maybe you're a narcissist or a sociopath or, I don't know, one of the other cluster B personality disorders. We are S and M and we are not mental health professionals. We are just two women who've experienced relationships with people who have cluster B personality disorders or who we think may have cluster B personality disorders. And we're here just to share our stories and listen to the stories of people around us and to remind everyone that you are not alone. So this is episode two entitled... The best title ever. I'm sorry, Lorena Bobbitt. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we really do owe her a huge apology. We all owe her. The we world the owes world. you a monstrous apology. Yes. I have now <laughs> seen not just you, but countless women like you who are very, very, very clearly the victims of narcissistic abuse get burned at the stake in the media mm-hmm. and in uh, at our at our water coolers in our dinner tables mm-hmm. and. Your life was sucked. Like yes. that your husband yes. was a terrible human being. Terrible. He was a shitty person. Yeah. <laughs> and in he, every way. And he treated you <laughs> so badly. I know this because I am now educated by watching Jordan Peele's docu-series on Amazon called Lorena, which by the way, if you haven't seen, you should see because it is fantastic. So basically, just in case you aren't aware, um, because it was about 25 years ago. Lorena Bobbitt is the woman who was an immigrant, married to a guy whose name was John Wayne. (laughs) I mean, parents did you wrong right there, buddy. The (laughs) all-American. The all-American boy, um, and who was abused, raped on a regular basis um, by her husband, and who was pushed and pushed and pushed to the point where she probably disassociated or... Am I saying that word right? Dissociated. Yeah. yeah. Um, found a knife. And while her drunk husband was passed out in his bed, she chopped his dick off with a knife. <laughs> High five, girlfriend. <laughs> High five. I would have I done mean, the exact same thing. This is one of those situations, right? I where you're like, his balls. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen this documentary when he's like, I was sleeping. No, you weren't. <laughs> you don't sleep through that. You were passed, passed out. out. <laughs> <laughs> and he blames her. He's like, she was trying to get it on, and I didn't want to get it on, so she chopped my dick off. And I was like, well, there's a little more to that story, I think. But <laughs> she apparently drove away from the scene of the crime and threw it out the window. And, you know, a lot of women are like, why don't you put it in the garbage disposal or something? <laughs> but, you know, and I'm not going to say that physical violence is acceptable. Right. But I understand. Right. <laughs> I have been there. I'm not even going to lie. I've been in a position where I'm like, you know what? It's a good thing there wasn't a knife around. (laughs) (laughs) I have never, ever acted out in a violent manner, but I could could see how that would happen. The thoughts are there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, I went out, watched that documentary and all the scenarios like leading up to that incident. I was like, girl... I could see like just mm-hmm. piling on and piling mm-hmm. on and she was completely trapped, right? Right. Um, thought she would get deported if she left him, had no support system. She was super young when she married him and you're just like, wow, you well, know? And she's living in total fear. I mean, that's, you yeah. know, she's terrified. Every, every single, single day. day. Yep. Right. So, you know, let's talk about why we believe that John Wayne Bobbitt was a narcissist. Mm. Let's, I mean, I'm going to use his own words here because I watched the documentary and P.S. Holy shit. (laughs) This guy doesn't even look like the same person. I didn't even recognize him. But he's sitting there on some crappy leather sectional with like a giant (laughs) soda pop. (laughs) And he's talking. With a straw. Yeah. And he's talking about like this incident and he's, you know, they're talking about his childhood and he was like, yeah, they used to call me Johnny Barbell because I always had to be the fastest and the strongest and I was so competitive. I always had to be the best at everything. I was like, well, Mm -hmm. that's trouble, right? (laughs) No to parents, Mm -hmm. right? You know, maybe it'll give your kid a little bit of room to fail, right? Right. right. Um, But he then joins the Marines. Well, that's a... 
perfect <sighs> petri dish God. <laughs> for a narcissist. Oh, for sure. I mean, so he's now in the military. I think he met her at a military ball. Um, so now he's, you know, I mean, give a guy a weapon in power. Yeah, it's really scary. A lot of the ex-narcs that I've dated were all in the military. They yeah, all had a yeah military they were, weren't they? Mm-hmm. And didn't he say, too, when his doc, something that I read or saw is that he actually used the Marines as a way to be, to say, oh, I would never, I was trained to protect people. Yeah. I would never hurt anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally just twisted that entire thing. So, you know, that and then when Lorena was interviewed and she talked about the history of their relationship and his as well, he talked about how he was so in love with her and she was the most beautiful person ever. So mm-hmm. there's a whole love bombing, just mm-hmm. love bomb and love bomb and love bomb. And as soon as she agreed to marry him, that's when the abuse started, right? Yep. That's when he's like, you're fat. I don't like your outfits. Buy new clothes. You look terrible. Um, started raping her, abusing her. Um, and then, you know, you know, the worst part about this whole documentary, I thought the one that really tugged at my heartstrings is she really wanted a baby. She gets pregnant and then he forces her to get an abortion. God. And is like mocking her while the procedure is being done. P.S. What year was this? And why were the nurses okay with that? Like, <laughs> they, he, she, she said they had to take her into another room to get him, her away from him. And I'm like, didn't the nurse say, hey, honey, do you really want to go through with this? Because mm-hmm. I don't know. That would have been a good question to ask, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but apparently she had this abortion. And she was devastated by it. Um, you know, and he was super lazy. He gets out of the military and he doesn't oh, work. He just lets right. her work. She's a nail technician. They're going to live on her income. Oh my gosh. I mean, you ever met any narcissists that are cheap? Um, uh, yeah. Just a few. <laughs> and lazy. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Lazy to the point so where they, lazy. like, won't get off the sofa. No. Like, go get me whatever. I love it when people wait on me. Yep. Who loves it when people wait on them? My last night wouldn't even take me out to dinner. Like, he wouldn't do anything that involved him actually making an effort in any way, shape, or form. And then, of course, when you actually confront them on it, they mm-hmm. just totally twist it. Yeah. I can't believe you would say that. I can't believe you don't like spending time with me. I'm like, um, I don't think I said that. They just, they're so, they're, gosh, they're just such crazy people. So which is he, why we're doing this podcast. Would they, would they let you take them out Oh, for 100%. Dinner? 100%. We split the bill. Oh my God. We did okay, so I, we actually we did go out one time, and but it was like basically me kind of making it all happen, and then we see, we split the bell. I was like, oh no, oh no, my gosh. that's really not. How so it how goes. does it feel when someone like wants to pay the bill? I'm going off on a tangent here, but like, so you meet some guy who's like, I'll pay. You're like, who are you and what's in it for you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? All right, what do you want? <laughs> right? <That's laughs> Is weird. this really a date? Oh man, but you know. The worst part about the whole thing, and the one thing that you're like, yup, this guy is a total narcissist, is the entitlement. Mm-hmm. The in- He Ugh. was entitled to have sex with her in any orifice, mm-hmm. in any time, in any manner of his choosing, whenever he wanted to. That mm-hmm. was his right. And, if she, and that's how he ended up raping her mm-hmm. over and over and over again. And it, it doesn't even sink into him even now. 25 years later, that that's not okay. Mm -hmm. You know, he still doesn't acknowledge that because, you know, that's who he is. That's the kind of person he is. And you're just, I don't know what it takes beyond getting your dick chopped off to (laughs) give you the the, the message that this is not an okay way to behave, but he's not got, he hasn't gotten the the hint. Right. You know? Right. Um, But the problem, you know, listen, you're not going to change these people. There's, the narcissist, the sociopath, these people who are toxic and awful, you and I and, and all of the mental health professionals combined, we don't change them. Right. But holy hell, the response by the public. Like, mm-hmm. do you remember when this happened? Oh, yeah. Like watching it on television. Mm-hmm. And it was unbelievable. The You know, I even remember my own mother saying, well, why didn't she just leave? Just leave. You don't have to, right. you know, you don't have to maim a man like that. Right. And I'm just like, well, hold on, mom. You know, my dad wasn't a, wasn't an abuser. So how does she know? She married my dad out of high school. Um, 
how do you know that she's not enduring something or doesn't feel completely trapped, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, You don't know what it's like to get raped every day and hung over a balcony and threatened with your life. And to be an immigrant, too, in that situation where you don't think you have any way out. Mm -hmm. And she grew up in a super religious culture. Like, you get married and you stay married forever. So she thought there was nothing else that she could have done. And then... And then, you know, all these men are like, they should give her the death penalty. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, my gosh. But she was... It's I mean, so insane. It was heartbreaking because they made her a laughing stock. Right. She was a punchline. It was all her fault. Her abuse. I mean, late night a TV host. I remember like top 10 mm-hmm. lists on David Letterman. And I'm like, first of all, when did we not become okay with naming the victims of sex crimes Mm -hmm. because her name was everywhere. Right. And she was a a complete joke. Mm -hmm. And everyone is horrible to her, harsh to her. Um, In in these interviews that John Wayne gave afterward, like he grinned the whole time, this Mm -hmm. smarmy fuck who just beat the shit out of his wife and raped her and got his dick cut off for it because, you know, whatever. Um, he still thinks it's funny. Right. You know? hmm And, yeah, like, people don't know what she went through. They have, even though you know, I mean, every so often, right, you hear women say, eh, good for you, I would have done the same thing. And I'm like, you know, th- there's people out there that understand, but so many people are afraid to share their stories. Right. And that's the thing when I watch this documentary, because I'm just watching it, I'm getting more and more angry. I'm getting angry at, like, just society for the way that they treated her mm-hmm. and judged her and made her a joke. Um, she She's doing great, right? So 25 years later, she's remarried. She has a family. She's got a career, and she does nothing but outreach for women and children who are abused. Mm-hmm. And it's inspiring right. and amazing. Um, and John Wayne is sitting on a sectional with his soda pop <laughs> and talking about like revisionist history and how he wasn't this horrible person that he really is. But here's the most fucked up part. Let's just talk about this for one second. <laughs> Do you know that he still writes her love notes? I don't think I knew that. He still sends her letters. All Marks do that. They always write love notes. It's weird. <laughs> he literally like ends this whole sort of docu-series in this interview and says, wouldn't it be, I mean, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly, but he said, wouldn't it be just so poetic if after all this craziness, we ended up together? Oh, gross. <gasps> oh my gosh. What? What? What a psycho. And, you know, it's, this is just, this is sort of case in point why these people are not treatable or curable. There's nothing you can do right. to change the way that they behave. This guy reoffended. He He beat a girlfriend 10 months after this mm-hmm. incident. And like was arrested. And then he did it again and yep. again and again. I don't even know how many times he was arrested for domestic violence. Yeah. If getting your penis chopped off isn't a deterrent to change your behavior, <laughs> there's nothing that will ever change them. There's right. no psychotherapy, no right. drug. The dude got his dick chopped off. Mm-hmm. And he's like, still give me an asshole. Not a whole lot to work with there, bud. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> like, what game do you have right oh. now? I'm super confused. And then after he like had the, the his his penis reattached, he went and got an al- enlargement. And oh, it was wow. like a hack job. And now his penis is like basically destroyed because even that wasn't good enough. Nothing is ever good enough when you're the narcissist. I didn't even know you could like even get things like that reattached and that you could, that they would work properly. She probably didn't know It's like a possibility. I don't know. She should have cut his balls That's why off. she should have in the balls. Right. I mean, you get, you got to like, that's not, apparently not enough. You got to go for everything. Because <laughs> then at least he would have had a little more emotional But if you think about it, I mean, in her eyes, when we don't know what was going on in her mind, but there's no way, that was the only way she could get him to stop. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. like literally he was brutalizing her every single day yeah, in, in multiple ways. And it's like, you go, you, they make you go freaking crazy. Yeah. They make you go crazy. Well, that's the thing. They make you, and they make you uh, think you're crazy. They make you think you're crazy. Right. Right. So they'll, they'll do something shady or horrendous. And then the next day you're like, let's talk about this. Right. And like that didn't happen. Right. And you're like, oh my God, did it really not happen? Right. 
right? Mm-hmm. And and it's it's insidious. And it, there's so many other women out there that are like that. And you know, now that I know what it is and and, and have recognized it, you look in pop culture, and there's so many of them, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we should also apologize. To Amy Fisher. 100%. Girl. Totally my childhood. And girl. I was like, that, the Long Island Lolita. And by the way, that girl was 17 and we 17. hyper-sexualized her like she was a prostitute. Right. That's messed up. Right. Right? Um, yeah. So uh, if you don't know about this story. Um, Google un- it. Unfortunately, there wasn't a documentary about it that I've seen recently. However. There were three movies made, though. Drew Barrymore starred in one. Oh, Alyssa really? Milano. Yeah. And you know, it's funny. is the one where Alyssa Milano starred. I was looking at kind of like the Wikipedia about it. Yeah. And just they literally, and I, not, I don't know where the writing came from or who the author was of these words, but the way that they wrote the story of Amy Fisher totally blamed her. Oh, it was really, when I was reading it, I was like almost shaking. I you was know so that pissed. shit's crowdsourced. Some asshole wrote that. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> like it was all her and she came on to him and she was suggestive with her words and her actions. And basically the the angle of which they were, how they were explaining her was completely making it all her fault, which okay. that's what society tends to do anyway is like yes. the female gets blamed. <laughs> She's a minor. She's a minor. So from what I understand... If I, you can correct me because you did more Googling on us than I did. But Amy Fisher basically like crashed her parents' car mm-hmm. and brought it to this body shop because she didn't want to get in trouble. Right. And said, hey, how can I pay you? Can I pay you in installments? So, like, don't tell my parents. And this guy was basically like, yeah, we can fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you're going to pay That's me. That's how you're going to pay me. Yeah. This was all her fault, right? So he like triangulates her with his wife, like, oh, I can't leave my wife for you because, you know, that's my whole family and she would never do anything to me. But basically, um, push comes to shove. This woman is in, thinks she's in love with this older man, mm-hmm. Joey Batafuco. What a name. What a name. Like right there, you should know. I like, mean, right there. Yeah. I just run the other way. Right? Yeah. Ew. Anyway. And he, um, how, he was, I think, 35 at the time. Yeah. And she's 17. Right. Um, so she ends up going to their home and shooting his wife in the face. Mm-hmm. Not really sure what that was about. That's not cool. He shouldn't shoot the wife in the face. Mm-hmm. Never shoot the wife in the face. She shot him in the face, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was completely villainized in a situation where she had zero power. And this guy basically wanted him to, or her to you know, worship the ground she walked in. She was so right. dependent on him and his feedback, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that she would have done anything that he wanted her to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but he gets to get out of this situation, like, scot-free, like he wasn't some sort of a villain himself. And P.S., did you see him? Like, Oh, my gosh. <laughs> he looks like he's mafioso <laughs> for real. I know. <laughs> and, you know, Ugh. that whole confrontation, he engineered that. Right? Yes, one hundred. Who's at the That's... axis of that confrontation? It's not her. It's not his wife. Right. You know, it's this guy saying, "I'm so wonderful and so great and so sexy and so hot and so successful that these women all want me, and they're all just fighting over right. me." Look at them fight. Oh, look at them fight. Poor me. Mm-hmm. That's and exactly just, what they want. That's triangulation. Ex- That's exactly I mean, what they want. Master triangulator. Right. He was. He was awful, and yet we look at pop culture and women too. I mean. We talk about this girl like she's some sort of like seductive vixen, and we're like, she's a child. Mm-hmm. That's exactly it. Well, Remember I, being seventeen, M? Did you think clearly? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I still don't think clearly. <laughs> I don't even know what comes out of my mouth half the time. <laughs> but you, in your reference to pop culture, um, when I was doing some research, this is this is what made. Well, there's so many things that make me sick about all this. These two, um, John Wayne Bobbitt. And Joey Buttafuoco are considered celebrities. And the reason I say that is because the two of them, I think back in like 2006, a few years ago, they were slated to fight each other in celebrity <laughs> boxing. Are you out of your effing mind? I mean, only, I can't believe only if it, it was we're fighting actually, to the death. I mean, that would be, but still, like, we look at these men who are horrible people um, and we are literally putting them on a celebrity status. And that is so fucked up. And that's like the whole reality TV is like narcissism too. It's just like, it's like this playground for narcissists. But the fact that we actually are almost glamorizing these two men um, is just sick for 
so many on so many levels. Who do you think would have won though? Oh shit! I, I'm I'm but a I, know, I mean, even just because his name, <laughs> just his name is going to make him win. And John Thaw was not that big of a guy. He looks he looks terrible. Ugh. Um, yeah, he, he definitely doesn't look like he's still working out. I'll give you that. <laughs> so then, um, I was watching the Masters recently. I don't know oh, if this is going to be out, but God. everyone is all excited because Tiger Woods won. And I get it. I get the comeback story with the with the you know back injury or whatever and go America. But this motherfucker is a oh my God. dick, right? Mm-hmm. He total sex let's, addict. Let's let's just look back at the narcissistic abuse that poor Ellen Nordgren endured with him. By the way, she is lovely. Yeah, she is a lovely person. Yeah, right. Um, so go, Ellen, and I am sorry, Ellen. I'm sorry. No, we're sorry. We are sorry, sorry. because the time Team you, Ellen. you beat up your mm. husband Tiger Woods with the nine iron, I think it was, or a pitching wedge. I don't remember what club you used. <laughs> Maybe it's a driver. I was in a driver. <laughs> Straight up. I'm just saying, you know, I guess, you know, you remember Rachel Yucatel? That was the woman that he put, she supposedly caught him with or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it comes out that he had, I think, 120 yeah. plus yeah. affairs while they were together. Yes. 120? Girl, give me a give me a nine iron. I don't even <laughs> I don't even blame you. P.S. Okay. Let's just throw this out here, right? I don't, I don't even care. Have time to have 120 affairs. Like, what do oh, you do? Aren't you working on your swing? Like, what are you doing all day? <laughs> you, should be, you should be like, are you tired? God, <laughs> just be exhausted. That's a lot of sex. That's a lot of sex. But you know what? Also, like, I don't even care who you are. Like, that is that is nasty. That's disgusting, mm-hmm. right? Like. I don't know why it makes me think of homelessness. Like your dick is homeless and doesn't know where to live. Like you have a hobo dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna, it's gonna rest its weary head wherever it finds a little pillow, right? <laughs> it doesn't just, care where that little pillow is. It just doesn't care. It just doesn't it care. It doesn't care. Anybody, you know, wherever, wherever it can. And I'm just, I just don't understand it. It's just that it's, that need within Tiger, and I do see it with his background too, right? Like I'm mm-hmm. not going to psychoanalyze him, but nothing's ever good enough, right? Right? He could never be good enough, mm-hmm. and so no woman, no relationship, no right. amount of sex or love is ever going to be good enough. So he is going to take his whole dick and just <laughs> <laughs> find it somewhere to live every night, I guess. Oh my um, gosh! But it's and it's crazy too because P.S. His wife is totally smoking hot. Yeah, she's gorgeous. I know. When I first found out about this, I was like, what? What is he doing? Yeah, he's not smoking hot. Because, But it has nothing to do with her. I mean, that's right, the thing. That's it the has thing. nothing to do with her. It's and so many women him. blame themselves when their partner, you know, has an affair or whatever. And it's, it has nothing to do with you at all. At and all. It's him. He, he is, he epitomizes the narcissist who is only as faithful as his options. Right. Right. So Tiger Woods is a celebrity. He's got a lot of money. So he's got a whole lot of options and he's just going to take them all. Why Mm -hmm. not? Because he can, because he feels entitled. He is the best and the the most worthy and he can have whoever and whatever he wants. And there's zero regard for the humanity in there. And it's just, it's sad. It's so sad because... I don't think Tiger likes himself a whole lot. I know, you no, know, right? Because again, he's just so driven to succeed. Like, I mean, I get he won the Masters, okay? But, yeah, I mean, everyone's but phone at the same automatically time, went off. It's oh, like, didn't some girl, some female, like discover something within the black hole like a few months ago or something? I saw it on like a feminist news. Okay. Did, why didn't our phones go off with that information? <laughs> oh, I know, you know right? What I'm saying? Like, I know. Why, why? Like, I don't really give a shit that he won the Masters. I don't care. That's great. You're a good golfer. You're a good athlete. Yeah. Like, why do I care about that unless I'm investing in like your stock or something like that? I don't care. Oh, so my gosh. So it's just like, yes. look what the media is, is they're totally controlling what what we see like yep. why does what why don't like information that I don't know I just think it's ridiculous that like my phone automatically went off I'm like oh that's what I'm getting informed yeah. on there's so many this other things going on in the world thing. well that's that's you know it's funny you bring that up because the end of the documentary like one of the last scenes in the documentary about Lorena Bobbitt was this I think like porn star I could, I could be wrong but some some woman um from the documentary, I think she had had a relationship with John Pavitt, says, 
<laughs> she goes, you know, they, 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 they chop off little girls' clits in, in Africa mm-hmm. by the millions and no one says anything and mm-hmm. you chop off one dick and we talk about it for 25 years. Right. Right? Right. And you're like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Puts it into perspective. Yeah. You know, and so, you know, but good for Ellen. She took her two kids and went back good. to Sweden. Good for her. And she get is out living of this, this great, weird country. Yeah. She's living a great life. And I'm like, God, I hope you still get half of that. I don't know. <laughs> more than half. <laughs> more than Way half. more right? than half. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, there's probably so many more women out there and so many more celebrities. And I think there's people even in my personal life where I need to reevaluate and say, hey, I'm sorry. Like, you were living some shit. Yeah. And these guys, maybe girls, maybe women. Right, but these people make you feel and act like you don't know which way is up, mm-hmm. right? And you feel like you have no other options. And you get to a point where you're like, "I got to pull the plug. I got to get out of here. I got to figure out a way out." Um, I might. I feel like I'm crazy. I feel like I'm never going to get away from him um, or her. Mm-hmm. And and so yeah, you know, it's that there. There was a in Lorena Bobbitt's case, they had a. Um, they had one of the witnesses was a like a psychologist and he's like it's just continues to whittle whittle away at your agency until you mm. feel like there's no you have no other option right and i feel for those women i you know i've i've you know been in similar situations where you think you have no way out and when you have very little resources what are you going to do so exactly. anyway ellen and lorena, lorena. and um Miss Amy Fisher. And everybody like you. Mm-hmm. We are so sorry on behalf of the human race and the American <laughs> population and all women who judged you. Yes, we're sorry. <laughs> right? Because, yeah, it's um, it's a mind fuck being mm-hmm. with these guys. Mm-hmm. And if it was, you know, if it was easy to leave, um, it, it, we all would have left them, right? right? But it's like, you don't know what you, you don't know what way is up. Most of the time, they're so way. nice. They are so nice, right? So nice. And if you're... Still a little bit uncertain. Go back and listen to episode one, and it's not me. It's you. We break down um, the basic steps that pretty much all narcissists use when they're uh, with their victims. And um, yeah, once you get in it, it's like you don't even really know what's happening because one day they're super nice to you, and then the next day it's like the cold shoulder. So you're like, wait a second. Sometimes in the same day. Sometimes, Sometimes in twenty in minutes. Sometimes in the same day. Right. Exactly. So you you begin to slowly over time. It's very very subtle. You begin to wonder, oh, maybe, maybe it is me. Maybe okay, maybe I'm not as confident as I thought, or they, like they'll just yeah. So it's a lot easier than you would think to get into a situation that you don't know how to right. get out of. Right. Well, you know, and I think if women like Lorena Bobbitt or Amy Fisher would have had the compassion and the support mm-hmm. That's of their just community, it. right, and their and the people around them, they wouldn't have reached for the old the old knife or the gun, right, or the pitching wedge, right. You know, they would have they would have had a way out. So I would like to be a way out for some of those people. Yes. Okay. Very good. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Bye.